Hey, 3D Printing family, I am here to talk about the state of auto supports. Now, I made a video a few years ago called Why Auto Supports Suck and You Shouldn't Use Them. I still personally don't use them, but now I do think they're more viable than they were before, especially if you're not crazy OCD like me looking for absolute perfection. Because I realize when I, even when I do my manual supports now, I probably mess with the size of some part of the support probably 90% of the time. So for me, auto supports aren't right, but for people who aren't crazy like me, I actually think auto supports um, should be a part of your workflow, to be honest, which I would never have said before. So I videoed me using uh, Lychee, Chitterbox, um, and Prusa Slicer, putting the auto supports on, checking for islands, doing all this stuff. And I realized it was gonna be pretty long I'm pretty boring to prove to you what I'm about to say. So hopefully you can just trust me. I'm going to tell you the truth. Uh, I have no interest in any of the three slicers. So this is just honest, uh, you know, recount of what happened. So what I did in each one, I maximized the amount of supports. Uh, and I did uh, what I would call a medium support, like a 0 0.30 tip. And then I auto support. And I did the exact same figure in the exact same orientation. Um, if anyone really wants to see videos, I have them. I could, I could show you if, you if you email me and you want to see them. So this is what I found. Now, auto supports are way better than they were a few years ago, which is to be expected, but still not quite as good as I would have hoped. So first, let me tell you what I found, and then I'll tell you what I would like to see from the auto supports going forward. So uh, in terms of supporting the most islands on the model, uh, Chitterbox was number one. Uh, Prusa was number two and Lychee was number three, but the difference between Lychee at number three and Chitterbox at number one was maybe like two small islands missed. So all of them did a pretty good job, but you can tell from what I just said, they all missed some islands, which was a little disappointing. I, I would hope um, by this amount of time having gone by, they'd have an algorithm or even using AI that could find the lowest point of every point of the model and put a support there. Uh, they didn't miss a lot. Like I said, there are just a couple islands missed here and there that, that should have had supports. Not ones that would make the model fail, but still, you know, I don't like any unsupported islands where you could get resin cured to your FEP or somehow floating in your vat or whatever. Plus the model then doesn't come out exactly perfect. So they all missed islands, all of them. Uh, again, not too bad. What I found also was, and again, for all three of these, this was surprising. Sometimes there was an island and the support, like the island was there, like the lowest pixel, the support was kind of right next to it. Now, again, this wasn't often, just a few spots on each model, on each slicer, but yeah, the, the actual supports weren't touching where they should be. They were a little over. So if you're going to use the auto supports, I recommend, uh, this is how you do it. One, first put your heaviest supports because the other thing about auto supports that's bothering me that I would like to see change is an algorithm where it can kind of determine where you need a heavy, a medium, or a light support. Instead, it, it's just put all the same supports everywhere. Um, put your heavy supports when you need them at the part of the models that are anchoring the model, whether it's, you know, if it's like a foot plus an elbow, you want your heaviest ones there. So place all your heavy ones, then go to a medium support like a 0.3. Um, if you're using my insane support settings, you're doing miniatures, not big stuff. And then you can auto support all the rest of the spots. Then what you have to do, and this I highly recommend, you have to go back and quickly, because auto supports is so quick, you shouldn't worry about wasting a little time doing this. Go back and check every support, make sure it's touching uh, the lowest pixel that needs to be touching. It's not next to it. That only takes a few minutes. So you just double check all the support placements to make sure they're correct. Adjust them if you need to. Um, there you can also, um, if it's supporting, say, like tiny, tiny little bit of material, maybe you change the size down to a light. So I would just go back and kind of double check all the supports. Then because it's going to miss some islands, um, you can run the island checker and see if that picks up anything it misses, which oddly enough, the island checker sometimes picks up islands that the auto support missed. You would think is using the same algorithm, but I guess it doesn't. Um, the other thing is I highly suggest you use a program called UV tools, U V tools. Look that up. That catches every island. So if you're going to use the auto support method to speed up your workflow, after you do those auto supports, run it through UV, UV tools, um, island checker. And when you do that, you can then make sure you've supported every island. So the state of auto supports, not quite where I'd like it to be, but way better than it was. So I personally still won't use them because like I said, I'm, 
I'm a little crazy with my supports and I literally alter the something on literally like 90% of my supports just to try to get the best result I can. But I understand for most people, that's not necessary. I get that. So uh, auto supports are usable, but don't just use auto supports. At the very least, you have to run it through UV tools afterwards and make sure um, that you've gotten all the islands because all these programs, as I said before, I'll say it one last time, all these programs will miss some small islands. So uh, it, it's important that you that you do run it through UV tools or you can manually, if you're good at it, at spotting, you can manually, you know, check the model and make sure there's no, that there's no islands there. So that's it. So I'm not going to say like I did a few years ago that auto support sucked the same way, but uh, they're still not perfect and uh, hopefully they'll keep getting better. Like I said, what I'd really love to see uh, to you people designing those programs is something that can analyze the weight that each support is going to support and then uh, have varying thickness of supports to match, uh, you know, the job it's going to do. Then auto supports would be way, way better. Cause like I said, I have to go back manual and change so many of them to make sure I get the right tip size for, for what, you know, that support is actually supporting on my model. So anyway, that's it. I, I, I now endorse using auto supports in your workflow if you do it the right way. And I think it doesn't matter which program you use of, of those big three, but Chitterbox, Chitterbox, Lightyear, or Prusa, they all work pretty well right now. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please like. Uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I've got a lot more stuff coming out now that I'm, I'm back into my workflow. Oh, and if anyone cares, because I do get uh, people asking me about my clothes sometimes because I wear some, I guess, uh, not so normal stuff. This is uh, from a company called Into the AM. It's a bunch of artists. They make really good. They make cool stuff, nerdy stuff, beautiful stuff, sci-fi stuff, fantasy stuff. So Into the AM, I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the video also in case, uh, uh, in the description in case anyone wants to check it out. They do make some very, very cool stuff. I would advise to wait for a sale though, because I, if I recall, um, they're a little bit pricey sometimes, but good stuff. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching and happy 3D printing.